Hi everyone. So we received a comment on this video here, which essentially said, how does this all work then? How, how are we meant to get internet on our VMs with just a, just a gateway server? Uh, and I realized that I didn't actually explain that or even look into how that was all working in the video originally. So let's just go through that. Um, thank you to, to deck1slh for, for pointing that out and for, for querying it. So we'll just jump straight into it. So in our uh, Hyper-V server, when we finish building this machine, uh, the, or these machines, we should have essentially gateway one, GW1, uh, and then all the other machines that are ready to go. But GW1 has a couple of extra NICs, uh, one extra NIC uh, compared to the others, which is um, which is CorpNet0 uh, with this virtual switch. This is actually a private switch, which is used to communicate with the, the other VMs. So then we also have this other switch that's, that's attached to CorpNet, uh, that's attached to uh, to gateway one and it uh, is the home switch for me It's wired home and that's the my home network which has internet access So firstly, I want to just check that this is actually working for me and that my CM1 server for instance has actually got internet access without a second NIC connected So I'll just check that so we have um, One NIC which is CorpNet 0 which is this one here and just to verify that it is a private switch I'm going to go into Virtual Switch Manager and we'll check that private switch. CorpNet here is um, is a private switch, private network. There we go. So that's all good. So we'll just jump into CM1 and test it. So into PowerShell, we'll check it has an IP. And it does. It's an internal IP in the private range of 10.00. Uh, and check that it can access the internet, which it can, and we'll see how it's accessing the internet through a trace route. So its first hop is very quick, less than a millisecond to gateway one, uh, which is in the which is ten zero zero two five four. We'll give it a few seconds to see if this one times out. It's not looking good. Um, Yeah, that timed out, but then straight into my uh, home router, which is 192.168.11, and then out to the internet, I presume, through Starlink. Good. Okay, that seems to be working. So we have internet access. That's the main thing. And uh, now we need to work out why we have internet access. So let's jump into Gateway 1 and see what is, in con is configured in Gateway 1. Super. Okay, so that's loaded. Let us uh, just follow through the troubleshooting here and just check that it definitely has the IP of the machine that I was seeing earlier on. So 10.00.254 and then also um, my Ethernet adapter running in the 192.168.11 range um, with a default gateway of my, of my home router. Good, okay. So that's that and let's check how it gets the internet. So it goes via Starlink over to its next hop, which I assume is is a, is a satellite uh, somewhere in the sky in in space, uh, and then over to ground stations, I assume. So that's that's all good, right? So um, what now? Let's check how it's doing that. So if we uh, take a look at the services that are installed on this machine and see if it's got any routing services that kind of thing i didn't actually look to see how all of this was just magically working so it's quite good for me to to take a look now okay so the first thing that jumps out is it's got remote access routing and remote access service um, so configuration required for direct access and vpn i'm not using it for direct access or vpn so i don't need to do that I'm quite happy with how it's working at the moment uh, so let us have a look at um, routing remote access and see what we can do. So one of the features of routing and remote access is network address translation, which I assume is what's helping me out here, uh, and LAN routing and a basic firewall. So let's focus on these um, things here and go into server status and check what we're doing. So server 2019, it's been up for 15 hours, days, 15 days. 
And uh, anything else we can do in this one? Nope, I'll leave that. Let's go into gateway one and do nothing. I can't do anything here. So nothing. So using this UI, you cannot view or modify routing remote access. Use remote access PowerShell commands. Okay. So let's try out some commands then. So let's assume that get remote access might be a command that does something. And it is. So we have pretty much what we saw earlier on that uh, routing is enabled or installed, but the rest isn't. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think that's that's all we're going to see here. So it's it's doing some routing. So let's see what the default gateway is of this machine. Uh, IP config all, and that is uh, that is the default gateway on my machine is one two one six eight one one, which is my home network, which is great. So let's try on CM one and see what the default gateway is here. Up so you can see IP config all. And the default gateway is 10.0.0.254. So that's um, essentially sending it straight through to my uh, to my gateway server, where it'll do some routing and magic will happen. Um, and I think that's it, because if if the gateway has internet access and we're trying to get to the internet, then the adapter will know that it can't find Google on this adapter, so it'll try the other one. So um, I think that's I think that really is it. I think that's how it's meant to work, and it is as simple as that for routing out of a private network onto the internet. So check that out. See if you've got any any of the stuff that's missing. Leave a comment if I've missed something out, but please do give that a go. And um, if you like this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.